When I turned 50, I had my first hot flush on my birthday, my 50th birthday. And I thought, here we go. This is it. This is the start of perimenopause. Didn't even know that word then. This is the start of menopause. And then I realized it had started many, many years before that and I hadn't realized. But one of the things I was struggling with most that I didn't really show to anybody and I didn't talk to about with anybody was a lack of confidence. I'd always been a relatively confident person. But as I hit that perimenopause with some real force, my confidence just seemed to go through the floor. And with it, my sense of competence. So instead of feeling like I could do my job, I started to feel like I couldn't do my job. Instead of feeling confident going out and mixing with people, I started to feel less confident. And the more I think about it now, looking back, the more I realized how much I was masking what was really going on. So in this video, I just wanted to share my thoughts on some of the things that helped me to get my confidence back and to reframe a lot of what I was feeling in those sort of perimenopausal years. I'm now postmenopausal. Hey, thank God for that. But all of those things that were happening in my perimenopausal years that may help you if you're there just to know that it, A, it gets better and B, there are things that you can do to really help yourself. Hi, welcome back. Or if you're new here, I'm Bev. I'm a 58 year old woman and I left my job at the age of 52 because I was really struggling with menopause and it was definitely brain fog, not being able to remember stuff, feeling completely incompetent most of the time and just struggling with self-esteem and self-confidence issues. But here's the thing. Since then, I've built a successful training business. I've written a book called The Business of Menopause, A Guide for Working Women. I've even done a TED Talk, stood on a stage in front of hundreds of people and talked about ADHD in menopausal women. All of which took a lot of confidence. So there's a paradox here. I was feeling less than confident, but then I went on to do things that took a lot of confidence and also built a lot of confidence as well. So the truth is we have some control over that confidence. And a lot of it is about really understanding what's going on. So I've got three things I really want to share with you. So buckle up. Here we go. So I call this period in our life the messy middle. This kind of time between our normal adult years when we're building a family and a, building a career and learning our place in the world and post-menopause or when we kind of go through the messy middle and come out the other side. And it is a middle it is a messy middle. We're in midlife. We're not at the end of life. And I think for some of us, that is the biggest hurdle when we hit this messy middle is we have so many beliefs and so many perceptions about menopause and sort of reaching midlife. It feels like the end. Society puts a lot of pressure on women to stay young. I absolutely hate anti-aging products. Why would anybody want to anti-age? Let's pro-age, let's healthy age, let's age with dignity, let's age gracefully or disgracefully, whichever way you want to go. But anti-aging, I don't get that now. You know, my mum died when she was just 54. So aging wasn't even a privilege that was given to her. So the idea of anti-aging just winds me up so much. So I don't like products that are called anti-aging products. I'm all about pro-aging. But I think we have a lot of pressures put on us to stay looking youthful, stay looking sexy, stay, you know, all of the, the kind of the, the pressures that are put on women to be a certain way. And as we go through this messy middle and as we head out of the other side, we're not the same person. We're not the same physiologically, biologically, psychologically, any other logically you can think of. We are different. So it is a massive 
change. And if our perception is that without all of those things that we're meant to have or meant to be in order to be a valuable, worthwhile member of society as a woman, then we're going to have challenges going into the next part of our life when a lot of that goes. So the first thing that I want to talk about is acknowledging that we are going through a change and it is a full change. As I said before, all the physiological and psychological changes, our body and our mind and our external environment a lot of the time are changing. And change is difficult, although in reality we're changing all of the time, but we hit perimenopause and it's like a seismic shift for many of us. So managing that change can be challenging. If you're familiar with Elizabeth Kubler-Ross's grief curve or change curve, you'll know that we kind of go through a phase of different emotions. And on one side of the curve, we've got sort of resistance, if you like, this sort of denial side to it. It's like we're fighting against the fact that this change is happening. And then on the other side, we get to acknowledgement and acceptance. But we've got to go through a number of stages. And this is true if we're going through grief, if we've been made redundant, if we've had a, a relationship breakdown or any change really that is significant in our lives, we will experience this curve. And I think for many of us, that first stage of kind of denial is is real. It's like, I can't possibly be in perimenopause. I'm not that old yet, especially since with more information about menopause and perimenopause, it's much more likely that we will recognize that we're there sooner than we maybe did in generations gone by. It used to be thought of as an older woman's condition, if you want to call it a condition, or an older woman's life stage. Whereas now we know that it actually starts so much earlier. It's not unusual to be starting to feel those changes in our mid to late 30s, early 40s for the, for the majority of us. You know, some women are even younger than that. So we've got this sort of denial going on. And then even when we kind of accept that it's probably happening, we want to fight against it. I know I certainly did. I went on this mad get fit campaign and I lost shed loads of weight and got incredibly fit for a 50 odd year old woman. And I look back now and realize that was complete. It was completely overkill. It was it was me fighting against what was happening. I, I kind of accepted it, but I wasn't willing. I'd acknowledged it rather, but I wasn't willing to accept it. And then as we go through the change curve, we move into sort of depression sometimes follows. And there is this kind of definitely for me, I wouldn't call it clinical depression, but there was a sense of loss and a real feeling of sadness about going through this transition. On top of all of that, the brain fog and the physical changes leaving me feeling incompetent. And then eventually I came out the other side and started to tap into those emotions of things like curiosity and investigating what's going on and, and wanting to learn more and start to take ownership of what was happening so that I, I didn't feel quite so out of control. And of course, the time it takes everybody to get through that learning curve or rather that change curve is, is going to be different. Some will go through it very quickly. Others like me might take a bit longer. But understanding that these emotions are going to happen gives us a really good starting point for feeling like we have some control over what is going on. Because I think the biggest hurdle is not knowing what's happening and, and fighting against it. And the truth is, this is going to happen to everyone. Every single woman will go through perimenopause or menopause at some point in their life. The only exception to that is if you sadly don't live long enough to reach the men that menopausal transition. So it's going to happen. Ch the change that we go through is inevitable. How we respond and how we react to it, that is within our control. There's a brilliant way to, to look at this in, in like an equation, which is event plus response 
equals outcome. So the event here is the changes that go on in our body as we go through perimenopause and through menopause into the, the postmenopausal years. That event is inevitable. That is going to happen. So we can't do anything about that event. But if we then add our response, how we respond to that is going to dictate the outcome. So if we respond by staying in those early stages of the change curve, in denial, in anger, in sort of pushing back and fighting against it, or in depression, if we stay there, then the outcome is going to be that we completely lose confidence, <clears throat> excuse me, that we completely use, lose confidence, that we see the whole process as the end of the world, that we are no longer you know, have any any value or worth in the world, that, you know, we, we will be so hard and down on ourselves. But if we choose a different response and we choose to see this as a natural life stage, a bit messy at times, but the start of something better going forward, so the end of one chapter in our life and the start of a new chapter and we've just got to get through this messy middle, that puts a very different perspective on the outcome that we're going to get. So having that ability to reframe what we're going through from something negative to something more positive. And it is interesting, I've asked lots and lots of women this, what are the positives about menopause? And many of them say there aren't any and I can disagree with that now. I wouldn't say I could have always disagreed with that, certainly not in the early stages. But looking back with hindsight now, I can see that there are so many benefits, benefits that go beyond just not having periods anymore, but benefits about really finding out who we are, who we want to be, finding a new identity, redesigning our future, and letting go of some of the expectations that were placed on us as younger women, all of these are really empowering reframes for coming out the other side of this and heading in towards sort of, you know, in, into later life. Because let's face it, most of us, not all of us, but most of us are in our sort of late 40s to mid 50s when we reach menopause. And that is mid life. The, the vast majority of people these days, women in particular, are living well into their 80s. So we're not far off, you know, halfway through our lives. So let's not write ourselves off in our 50s. And certainly not if you reach menopause younger than that. It's just the start of the next thing. So the, the event isn't going to change. That is going to happen to us. That's inevitable. Our response, we get to choose. And we may need to challenge some deeply held beliefs and deeply held thoughts about the aging process. We might have to let go of some stuff. But when we choose a more positive response, we will get a better outcome. So that's the first thing. The second thing is about arming yourself with what you need to be able to manage this transition confidently. Forewarned is forearmed. And the more you know, the more you can educate yourself about this transitional period, the more confident you will be in managing the fallout from it. Things like the symptoms, especially the sort of cognitive and emotional symptoms, but also the effect that it's likely to have on your friends, on your family, on your workmates. Understanding what it is you're going through and why you're feeling the way you feel gives you a massive head start on getting underneath how you're going to manage this transition. And you can do this, as I say, really by educating yourself. And there are so many resources out there that you can tap into now to really get to understand what's going on. Trust me, there are some awful resources out there. <laughs> there are some very inaccurate and not very well researched bits of nonsense out there on the internet. But there are also some amazingly well researched bits of information as well. So finding good books, 
good websites that are reputable. There's no reason why you can't go and do your research. There are lots of good books. You know, when I was going through this eight to 10 years ago, there weren't that many good books out there. They hadn't been written. Um, in fact, the book that I wrote, The Business of Menopause, A Guide for Working Women, was a book that I wish I'd had when I was going through this because I couldn't find any really good, clear information. It was either all flowery and, I don't know, just nonsense, or it was very, very clinical, and I couldn't really find anything that explained what was going on with me and my body and, and my mind in a way that I could understand. So I wrote it. Um, if you're interested in it, well, I'll put the link uh, in the description. But educating yourself gives you a sense of being in control. My, my lovely dad always used to say, you can deal with anything once you know what it is you're dealing with. And I totally subscribe to that. The hardest bit about anything is having something happen and we don't understand what's going on. Therefore, we feel out of control. We feel a little bit helpless. We need to arm ourselves with the education and the information that we need to be able to make choices for ourselves. And that might be medication, hormone replacement therapy. It might be non-hormonal medication. It might be non-medical at all. It could be that you, you know, once you've done your research, you realize that there are other ways that you want to manage this transition, this messy middle. So it could be therapy, it could be coaching. All of these things can really help. It could just be finding a community of women that understand what you're going through, who are also going through their messy middle and tapping into that community for support and being able to hear other people's stories. Because one of the biggest problems, I think, as we go through this messy middle is that if we're not careful, we can feel like we're going through it on our own and we're the only one feeling the way we are. And there's this wonderful thing that happens when you get women sharing their experiences. You see one after the other after the other going, oh my God, that, that could be me you're talking about. I so relate to that. that. That resonates with me. I had no idea that this was all to do with hormonal changes. And just having that reassurance that you're not going through this on your own, that there's nothing fundamentally flawed about you, that this is just biological um, changes that are going on, hormonal fluctuations that are causing all of the challenges that you might be having, it's just so reassuring. So finding resources to educate yourself, finding a tribe of like-minded women who will support you and help you to feel less alone in this will absolutely help with your confidence above anything else. And then the final thing is about advocating for yourself. Once you've educated yourself, once well, it kind of the follow on. So once you've acknowledged that this is happening and when you decide that you're going into this with a willingness to learn and take control and then you arm yourself with the tools and the resources you need to be able to do that, then you can start to advocate for yourself. And advocacy can come in many, many different forms. For me, advocacy was about recognizing that I wanted something different and this was actually my time. So I made the decision to leave work. I don't think I would have ever been fired, but at times I did feel like I might because I did feel a bit incompetent at times, although I was reassured that I wasn't incompetent. It was just a feeling. But for me, taking control and saying, right, okay, this isn't what I want anymore. I want something different. Choosing to leave work and start up on my own. Choosing to take chances that put me out of my comfort zone, built my confidence along the way. It built that confidence back up. Also, being open and willing to talk about this transition, this messy middle that we're going through unapologetically. Why on earth should we apologize for going through a natural life stage? We don't expect teenagers to apologize 
as they're going through puberty. It's what we expect from them. And yet we go through this massive transition in midlife and we feel like we have to apologize or worse still, brush it all under the carpet and pretend it's not happening. It's happening. <laughs> Let's own it. And that for me is what advocating for yourself is about. It's about owning what we're going through and being unapologetic for the impact it might be having. That's not to say that we just you know, don't care about anybody else, but masking it or fighting against it or hiding it is just another layer of pressure, another layer of shame that we have to wear, and I'm all for getting rid of that. So advocating for yourself, for me, is about unapologetically owning what we're going through but also being willing to ask for help and support and not feeling like we have to go through this on our own. And again, advocating for yourself might be arming yourself with good, solid research. So you, when you, if you do want to go and speak to a, a doctor, you go in with an expectation of this is what I have researched. This is what I'm going through. This is what I, this is the outcome I would like. And this is how I think I can get there and not feeling like you're at the mercy of a doctor to tell you how you're feeling, because you know that better than anybody. Advocating for yourself is also about finally putting yourself first. I think so many women have spent their whole life looking after everybody else around them. And now at midlife, this is the time more than ever to really start to focus on you and your needs. So that's your your lifestyle um, habits, if you like, as well. It's things like, I like to think of it as nest. So thinking about your nutrition, exercise, prioritizing sleep, I'm rubbish at that, um, managing stress, your thoughts, your feelings, actually taking time to make any changes that might need to be made to ensure that you can be the healthiest you can going forward into later life as we head out of this messy middle. I always think this part of our life is a really good opportunity to take stock, to just spend a bit of time thinking about what do I really want? I've spent all my adult years and they've got me to here. Is this how I want to be? in the future or do I want something different? It's like we reach a turning point. And advocating for yourself is, is also about thinking and reflecting about where you are now. And if it's not what you want, doing something about it going forward. And I know that can feel scary and challenging, but it's your time. You've got a whole life still ahead of you as you come out of the messy middle. Why not design it? For you going forwards. Your environment might have changed as time's gone on. You know, you, you're, if you've had a family, they might have left home. And if you've, you know, had a, a career, maybe you're wanting to find time to step back from that career. There's often 101 things going on outside of the environment. And I don't know, there's something about midlife that gives us a really good opportunity to reevaluate and to make changes going forward. And especially if you're feeling really underconfident, one of the things that I would say do more than anything is take on challenges that make you feel uncomfortable. The best way to get through a lack of confidence is to build skill in something where you build confidence. Putting yourself into situations that force you to get a little bit out of your comfort zone will absolutely help with self-esteem. Challenging yourself to try new things is one of the best ways, in my opinion, to really build confidence and also self-esteem and to start to feel good. And if it feels really challenging, look back over your life at all of the times that you've tried something new, done something new, achieved something, you're still the same person that could achieve those things. You just might not feel it, <laughs> but you are. So challenge yourself, push yourself out of your comfort zone 
And I promise you, you will see your confidence levels going up. And again, finding a tribe of like-minded women who get you and understand what you're going through and will support you when you're trying these new adventures can absolutely help. And if you're not sure where to go to find that tribe, I have one. It's called the Generation Exceptional Community. It's over on Facebook. I'll put a link below to join. It's specifically for Gen X women who have navigated or are navigating the messy middle, but who are wanting to go into their next chapter, feeling more confident, feeling supported and having a bit of a laugh and a cry at times together. That's what the community is all about. And that's what we need. So to summarize before I head off, it is a a challenging time as we go through this messy middle. But there are things that we can do to regain our confidence and not let perimenopause and menopause strip us of our confidence and strip us of our sense of worth. First of all, acknowledging that it's happening and choosing your response to it. Secondly, arming yourself with the information and education you need to be able to feel confident asking for what you need. And thirdly, advocating for yourself and taking stock of where you're at and redesigning and redefining your how you want your future life to look. I hope you found that helpful. Maybe you can relate to some of it. Let me know in the comments. Did your confidence feel like it dropped when you went through this messy middle? And how did you regain your confidence? If you like this, please do give me a thumbs up and I will talk to you again very soon.